Talking, talking with famous people. How would you identify? How, what's the first thing you you can um that's evident in someone who's a censor that that you can identify that someone's a censor right away? Well, it's not easy to say right away, but one one thing that there's a disconnect between sensors and intuitors on is subtext. So, for example, I don't think that confusion that just happened, a sensor wouldn't have made that mistake that that you made, which wasn't a mistake, it was over-intuiting, right? You were intuiting that what I said, even though it wasn't directly responsive, and I didn't indicate that it was directly responsive, that it was probably responsive, because it was related, right, in terms of its measurement vector. And so, you you responded to clarify. A sensor wouldn't do that because they they take things, sensors take things literally in the sense that unless there's a clear algorithm for a type of subtext that's already known such as irony or sarcasm or something then they aren't looking for subtext in communications with other people and that's something I've noticed which is hard to exactly nail down as a behavior though that you can point out so let me see what other kind of behaviors they have well I mean I think the, the best way to tell is what are they talking about okay so my the reason I asked is because the the last the the girlfriend that I in the our relationship ended like a month ago or so she I, I got her to take the test and not a very good indicator but uh she got INTJ and I'm pretty sure she wasn't not I'm pretty sure she wasn't an intuitive because she she would not talk about anything philosophical, anything political. She didn't want to theorize about anything. And she had of she she her topic of of conversation always uh always involved either something in the environment or another person. And it was very um very disengaging for me. It was very difficult for me to, to prolong conversation with her because of that. And uh, so I, I feel like that's not an not INTJ a, thing. No, it's not for sure. No, INTJs. Um, that doesn't sound INTJ to me. What was she? Yeah. Was she robotic at all? Define robotic. Did she express? Okay. Well. You know how in writing there's a certain cadence to to language that is both a, a mechanism of the precision of use of words and a mechanism of the rhythm of the sound of the language. Such that when I'm speaking or you're speaking, we're both speaking with a very extroverted intuition uh, kind of approach to it which is sound based such that when when I want to when I want to express a certain amount of, of clarity about something with well while well, we're expressing frustration I'm going to use this kind of a tone you know well INTJs don't have that much range and that kind of stuff so when they're changing what they're saying they expect their words to carry all their meaning more than their tone or their other other mannerisms of expressiveness such as gesticulation facial expression and other stuff like that all NTs lean towards less tone more content ENTPs are the most tone focused of the NTs let's see um I would say she was, I don't know, she was kind of robotic, but it was, um... Would you consider yourself yeah. robotic? 
myself. Is that what you said? Yeah, I'm trying to get a sense of what you mean. What where your your definition of salty is, so to speak. You know, I'm robotic unless it's something. No, you're not I'm robotic. Talking about something. No, I mean, like, I mean, like, um, okay, if um, if I'm talking to someone uh, about something I'm engaged in, like, uh, like an, an interest yeah. or whatever. Yeah. No. Okay, so you're you don't you don't understand what I mean by robotic because you are not robotic at I all. I don't think so. And if you and well, no, I was gonna say I'm very animated when I talk about stuff that I'm interested in. But it's not it's not something that changes for an INTJ, right? Whether they're excited about something, if an INTJ is excited about something or they're bothered by something or upset about something, they'll start kind of spluttering and but 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 um but they're not okay. Yeah, she. I think she, yeah, she definitely was robotic then. Okay. She, she, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think she was dead robotic. They don't. It's not a. It's not a. Look, what you're saying is well, when you're excited about something, you're expressive. You're saying my expressiveness is related to my emotions, right? So you're saying like, well, if I'm if I'm feeling it, then I'm going to show that I'm feeling it naturally more than if I'm not feeling it. Yeah, that's not a thing I'm talking about with INTJs. What they do is. They might feel it, but they're not the way they express their feeling it is not going to be through the cadence mechanism that we're both talking about. It's going to be through some other mechanism. So that's the issue. It's not a matter about frequency of that, but whether or not you do that or don't do that. Because INTJs really don't do this. They don't express yeah. like, like, you know, wow. They're, they're not dynamic in their speech at all. They have no d dynamics. Yeah, they, she she was definitely robotic. Um, she, uh, depending like, she always had the same tone uh, of voice and, and same mannerisms, no matter how she was feeling. And uh, she she would even if she she was feeling upset or if she was feeling happy, I could never tell unless she told me. So I think she yeah, was that's robotic. Yeah, that's robotic. <laughs> that's robotic. Yeah. So like, like yeah. you can tell me right away how, I, how I'm feeling. The only problem that, that people have with, with that is how I'm feeling might change from second to second. So, <laughs> you know, it's not a very reliable indicator of anything. But um, yeah. but yeah, it sounds like that would be INTJ. She may just not have found her um, preferred thinking area yet. That's true, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It, that was pretty much why it ended, honestly, was like, we were just so disengaged in conversation. Like it was just, it became a pain for me to uh, to keep conversation going. Uh, and that's usually I don't have that issue. Or I guess I prefer to listen more than I do talk. But I can, I, I can bounce off someone who is who is uh, keeping conversation with me, and that kind of keeps me going. But if I have to constantly ignite the uh, the conversation and etc., then it's very difficult for me to keep it going. And that was definitely a big issue doing it. That's two introverts. Yep. Yeah, that that'll happen with, apparently with two introvert relationships. Talking, talking with famous people.